Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome back to Creator on Wheels. I am Shiv, and I hope you guys are doing happy and healthy. Good to see you guys back after a very long time. Um, uh, for those who have subscribed to this channel, know that the last video was uploaded here several months ago. Uh, there was a very genuine reason for that break. Uh, I was down sick and I had to get hospitalized and the doctor told me no driving for a month, no riding and no driving for a month. Then uh, by the time I recovered from that and uh, I thought that okay things might get to normal. Uh, we had another uh, medical, uh, I would not say issue but something required medical attention uh, in my house uh, which is kind of keeping me busy even now looks like some convoy is going outside so that kind of uh, distracted me away from anything related to doing videos or anything uh, no photo photo vlogs or no videos or nothing like that and having said that uh, it's really difficult uh, uh, these guys are irritating Having said that, it's not just the busy factor that uh, kept me away from making videos. It, it really requires kind of a mindset wherein you can actually like sit in front of the camera, talk what you want to talk or tell what you want to tell. Or for that matter, even like going out of the house and traveling and all those things, it requires a kind of like a positive mindset that which I was not in and which is why I felt that, okay, let's not pressurize myself to do some videos. Uh, let me get through all of this uh, let me get through all of this turbulent times and then start doing it having said that uh, somewhere at the end of uh, march is when the office started as well though i was not going to office uh, even though it was uh, hybrid and we are expected only about like two to three days a week which actually means that uh, there will be more driving both in the morning and evening cutting across the beautiful Bangalore traffic at the peak hours of the day and that also means that I'll get more time to talk and make some videos like what I'm planning to start from today. So today I am going to talk about one thing uh, about my car. So over the last several months when I actually look at uh, my YouTube uh, viewership and the comments and all those things there have been quite a few comments on my uh, video related to this car which is Nissan Kicks uh, both the videos both the key videos which is about uh, the ownership experience as well as why I bought the Kicks uh, there have been a lot of questions about it and there was one specific thing that I experienced last week uh, as a matter of fact, it was not that a good experience and that's exactly what I want to talk about. So this video will be about uh, how exactly this whole service experience is with uh, Nissan cars or more so specifically Nissan Kicks here in Bangalore. Uh, my car is about uh, 3 years old, exactly 3 years old I would say. It has run about 17,500 kilometers and it was due for the third service. So third service is also our uh, first paid service the first two services were free services and this is the first paid service that i was uh, getting into so it's in the first of july that uh, typically uh, the uh, i get a call from the service center asking like when i'm planning to uh, drop my car for the service and all the stuff but this time around there was no call and uh, i avoid giving anything i, I avoid giving my car uh, before uh, 7th of july uh, because I need my car around that time due to some events in my house which uh, I don't want to miss having my car and struggle and all those stuff. So what I did is uh, on Thursday which is 7th of July I called up the service center myself and I tried to book an appointment for Friday. So uh, the service center that I am talking about is Surya Nissan and apparently after Shavar Nissan, that's a place from where I picked up my car uh, from the time they shut shop during the COVID times uh, this is the only option that I've been having and if you see my 
previous video about Nishan ownership experience and service experience and all. Uh, that time also it was uh, Surya Nissan to whom I had given my car for service. So I called up Surya Nissan. I told them I need to send my car for my third service. Uh, they told okay and they asked me whether I want to uh, come and drop the car or do I want to opt for the pickup and drop. And considering that this is the only service center which is available, which is, I don't want to call it like a visible range, but this is the only one which is there in the uh, closest circle uh, on Google Maps. And this is about 25 kilometers from my house. So this service center is in East Bangalore near Marathali. And I stay in Central Bangalore in, in Rajajinagar. So the distance is almost like around 24 to 25 kilometers. So I don't prefer to go there to drop it, come back in a cab and again go in a cab, pick it up and all those things because that will take almost like half a day or more than that. So as as uh, usual, I just pick, uh, did a pick up and drop. Uh, I opted for a pick up and drop also. And they told that on Friday morning at seven o'clock, the driver will call me, come to home, pick up the car and uh, once it reaches the service center, the service advice advisor will call me and blah, 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 and all those stuff. I intentionally operate for Friday instead of Saturday because um, quite often it happens that uh, they don't give the car back in the same day. So if I give it on a Saturday and if they can't give it on the same day, that means that I'll have to wait till Monday evening for the car. Okay. So I opted for Friday so that even if it gets delayed, I get my car back on Saturday. Now. Friday morning I get up early because they say that um, the driver will call me up at around 7 o'clock so I got up early waiting 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 I don't have the driver number I don't have any acknowledgement from the service center or from this third party service that um, Surya Nissan uses which is called one on one so these guys do just one thing they just come pick up the car drop it to service center or they pick it up from service center and drop it back to the customer's house so 8 o'clock 9 o'clock 10 o'clock no call at all, no driver came, no service center call, nothing like that. So I called up the service center, I asked like, I've been waiting since last three hours, nobody turned up and neither I have got any message regarding the driver number or anything, what is that I have to do? And the person at the other end, she tells me that, uh, did you even book a service? I told her, yes, I have booked a service. And she asked me who took the service appointment. I told her, I'm not sure that there was a lady at the other end. She took all my details and even she took the request for pick up and drop, but nobody came. So she tells me that, uh, no sir, we don't see any entry for a service booking for your car, uh, nor there is a request for uh, any pick up or drop. I was kind of like uh, almost on the verge of getting pissed off. So I asked her what to do. She told like, okay, let's do one thing. It's not possible for tomorrow, which is Saturday but I'll schedule an appointment for Monday. I told her it's okay, fine, go ahead and book a slot. And I told her to send me an acknowledgement or uh, regarding the service booking. And also, if possible, send the message regarding the driver. She told, okay. And this time intentionally, I asked for her name so that if something happens, which eventually did, uh, I can tell them that this was the person who took the appointment. Now, Monday morning, uh, I, as usual, wake up early, wait for the car, nobody comes up, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, I get pissed off, I call up the service center, I ask the same question, there was supposed to be a service, uh, uh, there was supposed to be a pickup for service, nobody came, no message, no call, nothing, so they asked me, uh, when did I book the service, I told it was on a Friday, and who took the uh, booking, I told that person's name. And they say that, no, there is no booking in your uh, car's uh, name regarding a service booking or anything like that. I told her, how can that happen twice in a row? Okay. I told that uh, I had called up on Friday because nobody came on Friday. Now, when I called up on Friday and scheduled a booking for Monday, even that is not there. What's happening? What is wrong with the system? And they give me an excuse that uh, the person who took the appoint the person who took the appointment on Friday is on leave on Monday. And I was told that on Friday, the person who took my appointment on Thursday was on leave. So I asked like, is it a trend that somebody takes an appointment booking and then they go on and leave on that day so that you can't blame that person. 
I I got a little bit furious and I told that I need to talk to the senior person in the service center. So she uh, reached out to me. Uh, she, I I explained her the situation. She apologized for what happened and she told that she will take the responsibility of um, uh, getting my car picked up and serviced and sent it back on Wednesday. Now again a two days gap. By this time already it's coming close to uh, one week of wait. Where she tells me that I'll get a message, I'll get a call, all those things. And even on Tuesday night, uh, she tells me that okay, the driver will call you up uh, and all those stuff. And whatever, for good or bad reason, I get a call at around uh, eight o'clock from a person who I thought was a driver, asking me where my house is, like the location, so that he can plan for the next day. And I asked him what time he'll come. He told that he'll come by around seven to seven thirty. I told that should be perfectly fine. Now, immediately after that, I got a missed call uh, from I don't know who that person is, but I could see his name on the true caller notification. But I didn't know who it was as it was an unknown number. I didn't bother uh, picking that one up. Uh, I didn't pick up the call, and then eventually, I just like I just got up next day morning uh, as usual, started waiting. Seven o'clock, eight o'clock, nine o'clock. I did not get any call from the driver. Then I suddenly got reminded of uh, this person who had called me last night, and I call him back, and he tells me that he is kind of like a supervisor from this company, which is one-on-one, which does this uh, driving pickup drop facility and all those things. And uh, he tells me that the driver was waiting in front of my house from seven o'clock in the morning. Uh, I did not pick up the phone, so he went back. I told like all that he had to do was call me. So he told that he was trying to call you, but you did not pick up the phone. Then I told him I haven't got any call, and I don't see anyone in front of my house since last one one and a half hour. The road is empty. So he told like let me check and get back. And by this time I realized that the person whose missed call I had last night was this driver. Now, after another half an hour or so, and I think it's around 8:30 now, I give them a call again, and he tells that no, sir, the driver has left uh, after waiting. Uh, I mean, he he continues to give the same excuse, uh, so I, I will arrange a different driver. I told like the the call that I got from is is the previous day. That's almost 12 hours back, and I haven't got any call from this driver uh, this morning. So I told like it's okay, sir. I'll arrange for a different driver. Next, uh, I wait for another one hour. Nine thirty. This uh, n- new driver calls me up, and he tells me that uh, he'll come to pick it up. And eventually, at around ten thirty, this guy comes, picks up my car, goes to service center, drops it. And uh, typically, what happens is, as soon as the car reaches the service center, I get a message. Or the or the service advisor gives me a call and tells that okay the car has reached and um, he takes off like do you have any issues and all those things. But this time around, he took almost three hours I think post lunch is almost like two o'clock or something is when he called to ask me what is the issue with the car and what do you, what do I want uh, uh, to get done on the car blah 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 stuff and all those. I I don't understand why people beat the service center or this third party service board even care a little bit about this whole customer um, service aspect. Like, why don't they bother about it? And by this time, uh, I'd already called the service center twice because I don't know if the car has reached the service center and I have not got the uh, call from the service advisor and they're like as soon as the car will reach we'll give you a call but no call has come now and eventually he calls me up at 2 o'clock when the car was supposed to get started like when the car was supposed to get serviced uh, from morning he calls me up at 2 o'clock and i'm pretty sure like from my experience in the past i know that if they call post lunch that means that they'll start the service only next day now somehow uh, he managed to take all the details from me i had a little bit of issues with the ac which i mentioned and he told that once all the service is done is when they'll check the ac part of it because it's not related to the general service that they do 
and I asked him like if I can get the car back in the evening. He told like sir, it's impossible. I told it's not my fault. Why are you delaying it because of no issue of mine? So like no sir, the car uh, will be picked up for service only tomorrow morning. So I'll give you tomorrow evening. I agreed because I was mentally prepared for this uh, when I wanted to give it on Friday itself. So eventually, on uh, when was this? Thursday afternoon, he calls me up and he tells that the car is ready and they will send it. I told okay, and I need to do the payment. Uh, they send me the uh, amount and they send me uh, this thing, uh, the UPI uh, QR code to which I need to do the payment. And typically, what used to happen in the past is when the driver comes home with the car, he comes with. Uh, I mean, I get a message. I click on the link, and I can I can do that uh, particular payment. But uh, this time around, they asked me to do a online payment using that QR code, which they send it to me in a WhatsApp. And I do that payment, and parallelly at the same time, the driver has also reached home. Now the driver is not. I, I was not at home. I was in office uh, on Thursday, and um, my family member uh, was there to. Guide the car back home because he was stuck somewhere and he wanted uh, guidance regarding the address and all. He came, he reached home, but he refuses to give the key because I have not sent him a WhatsApp message of the payment confirmation. Now, isn't that something which the service center is supposed to be taking care of? Uh, they are supposed to coordinate with him, right? Or he is supposed to ask that. Now, he he tells me that he was waiting for me to send a WhatsApp message. Uh, Showing the details that he has done the payment and all those stuff. Rather, I have done the payment and all. I got totally pissed off. I just went back and I sent the the payment details to him, and eventually he gives the car, car keys and goes. Like a, this whole experience, like one week of like, I mean, I would really call it as traumatic experience itself, because just imagine like somebody is like waiting, getting up early in the uh, morning, waiting for somebody to pick up the car and all those stuff. So one thing that really pisses me off is this whole disrespect for customer service here in India. And considering the fact that there is very less number of service centers available for Nissan, um, I'm really getting worried how it will be in the future because uh, I'm pretty sure going forward next year onwards, I definitely don't want to give the car to service for uh, Surya Nissan. Uh, not just for this whole fact that this. The experience uh, this time around was not good. The second thing is the distance. Again, that means that very uh, likely that the car will be uh, out for two days, okay, and I have to rely on somebody else to pick up the car and drop it, and and it's going across the city. And I I don't know. I'm I'm feeling very uncomfortable uh, giving it to Sari Nissan for both these reasons. One is the distance factor, and second thing is this whole um, experience that I had for the last one week. Which left a very bitter experience in my mouth, so I would prefer not to give it to them. Apparently, I do have one more option, which is uh, third party, like I mean, uh, a service center, which uh, is I don't know what do they call them, uh, where they do multi-brand uh, car service center. It was Mahindra First Choice previously, but I do know that they specialize in Renault and Nissan, uh, and it's. Much closer to my place, and my previous car, I used to give it here for almost uh, three years, two to three years, or maybe even more. Uh, but that time around, I was not keeping Nissan in my mind, so I was not asking anything regarding this, uh, the spares availability and all those things. But I'm pretty sure they, being an authorized service center for Nissan and Renault, they they should be able to procure the parts easily. And as I told you, it's much closer to where I stay, so I would probably give it there. But the whole intent, okay, uh, fast forward to whatever 15-20 minutes. So, the whole intent of this video was to tell how pathetic or how bad this whole service experience is when it comes to the Nissan brand as such. Uh, Nissan makes fantastic cars. I'm really, I have zero issues with my car. Touch wood. I, I never had any breakdown in the last three years. I never had any mileage issue. I never had any any such issues. Like something which I should say, this car is. Bad or like, I feel bad about it. The car is so good, but as everyone knows, there is lack of um, dealer network, uh, which is preventing them from doing more sales. I somehow feel that like Magnet is doing pretty decent, but now there are 
better cars in the market and i don't know what is the uh, future of magnet but especially on the next which is very handful of them across india uh, banking on these um, service centers which are like least bothered about uh, customer uh, experience or the customer service aspect of it i seriously doubt how things will work out in the future for nissan okay we won the handful of them what they are selling now be it the kicks or be it the magnet i i think that even that will go down the drain for them so this is exactly i mean if at all if you are planning to buy a nissan car be it kicks be it the magnet or whatever please keep this thing in mind that the service network across the country i'm not even telling only bangalore across the country is really bad and uh, if at all if you have one of these uh, uh, third party service centers which do multi brand service and if they do reno if if you're sure that they do reno that means that uh, sourcing the spare parts for nissan is not a big deal but uh, look at all these things before investing on it uh, because the car is good but the the whole service experience is what will is not at all enjoyable so that's exactly what i wanted to tell in this video I know it's a very first video after this long break and I think it went for almost 15 20 minutes but it's okay that I I I told what I wanted to tell and I spoke my heart out I know I took out that service center's name and all those things but people need to know uh, what exactly is happening I mean there there is always things like I mean I've seen right from the world go people bashing Nissan and all those things but Nissan car is very good Nissan brand is very good but it's just that the lack of dealership and the lack of good service centers availability here in india is what is causing all this backlash i feel uh, it's not like our tatas or mahindras or uh, even for that matter even maruti wherein like you can get a service center in every corner of the road so that's that's exactly what it is uh, i will i have few more videos regarding this whole nissan car and a uh, few other repair related works that happened sometime late last year which i had recorded but i had not edited and posted probably i'll revise them and i'll re-record and i'll send it and i have a lot of fun videos to share about uh, the nissan car but um, this is this is it for this one okay it's it's a lengthy video this is it uh, if you have any questions regarding this if you have any questions regarding my overall car experience forget about the uh, service part but the overall car experience if you have any questions feel free to ask me in the comment section i'll be more than happy to answer that and uh, that's it for now that's it for this particular video uh, thank you so much for watching and if you really liked it and if you think that this video will be helpful for somebody who is already having a nissan car or is planning to pick up a nissan car please do share it with them so that uh, it becomes helpful for them and uh, that's it for now uh, i'll catch you back in the next video until then take care and mathe se goda